Hi everyone, it's Paul Munder from Production Expert here. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the key features of Spotterfish. Spotterfish is described as a cloud-based screening room which allows you to hold remote spotting sessions together in real time. I'll demonstrate the process now. To start a session, click on your screening room. It will take you through a series of video, mic and audio checks. Once you're happy with all of this, select Take Your Seat. Now that we're in the screening room, we can invite people to join. Spotterfish offers rooms with 2, 5, 10 or 20 places which they call seats. If I click this camera icon, it opens the moderator panel where I can load a project or start a new one. Once it's open, I can invite people by clicking on this icon and sending them invites by email or by clicking on the room link to send it to collaborators. Once team members enter the screening room, you can hear and see them by using Spotterfish's video conferencing system. There's also a text chat in here too. Once everyone is in the room, or rather their seats, you can start spotting. You can hide the other participants and make more space for the video by clicking on Turn Lights Off if you prefer to view with fewer distractions. As soon as you start the video playing, all participants see it running and can comment and contribute to the discussion. I should mention here that there are several ways in which Spotterfish is a lot better than something like Zoom for this kind of work. Firstly, the transport controls are shared, so any participant can control the video and navigate back and forth. Everyone sees it in perfect sync and it maintains this synchronization because Spotterfish's sync server dynamically adjusts the playback based on everyone's internet connection in order to ensure that all participants are seeing the exact same frame of the video at all times. It supports video resolutions up to 4K and WAV audio in stereo and multi-channel surround. Notes can be added and categorized by using the marker system which makes it easy to keep track of any changes which might need to be made. Markers can be added by clicking on the marker icon, hitting return, or pressing the down arrow key to drop a marker on the fly. The marker list panel keeps the markers organized and makes reviewing them at any point in the session easy. It allows you to search by category, title, or collaborator, which on a large film project could be very handy once you've dropped a large number of markers onto the timeline. If you click on this little arrow, you can easily navigate to specific timecode locations within the project. Once the session is finished, the marker list can be exported and formatted to be compatible with commonly used video and audio editing software. Obviously on most projects, security is of high importance, so Spotterfish employs a two-stage authentication process and files are encrypted using Google Firebase and can only be deleted in your dashboard and viewed in your screening room. I do a lot of audio and video work and quite often have to make various changes at a client's request. Spotterfish is a great way of doing that and it's very easy for all participants to use. Check it out at spotterfish.io. Thanks for watching.